Ahoy shipmates, Rusty from Rusty Ship here, and this is Joy, the band manager of Rusty Ship, and Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. We are here at the very end of 2019, and we just wanted to take a minute and just kind of celebrate what an awesome year 2019 was Ooh, for cool. Rusty Ship. Awesome year. <laughs> um, I think that everybody can agree that 2019, it really was our best year yet for yeah. this band. Cool stuff happening just on every level, mm -hmm. the whole year from beginning to end. Yeah. And so we just wanted to share some of the highlights and just kind of recap what an awesome year it was. Yeah, it was a really, really good year. Every, it feels like every year kind of gets like more pumped up from the yeah. last, though. It's like... Yeah, pretty cool. Every, every year is getting better than yeah. the last one, that's for sure. Yeah. So this year, 2019, um, this was fresh on the heels of um, December 2018 when we wrapped up our uh, Indiegogo campaign mm -hmm. as far as the, uh, the, the push that we were doing to get uh, funding for the Liquid Exorcist project. Yeah. And then we also came out with a, a music video for Crack Baby, which up to that point was the best music video we had ever come out with. Yeah. Uh, with Aaron Scott. Who incredible. did our Breaking Ways video as well. Yeah, he's an amazing... Very incredible. Singer, yeah. Very incredible. So then into 2019, um, f fresh off the heels of that, uh, we started the year off still finishing up the, the finishing touches of the Liquid Exorcist project in the studio with our producer, Stephen Lywicki. And, uh, Another incredible producer. Yeah, <laughs> very phenomenal. We had a great experience working with Stephen at Yaklin Studio. And so the beginning of this year, we just spent finishing up the recording, mixing, mastering, and mm -hmm. then on to the manufacturing of mm -hmm. the album and all the new Liquid Exorcist related merch that went along with that for this campaign. And my favorite part was pre-releasing it months before it was released to the public to all of the Indiegogo contributors. They got mm -hmm. it, what, four months early? No, uh, five months early it was something like that uh, uh, merch that isn't anywhere else and they got their CDs or digital downloads or whatever it was super early so there were people yeah. listening to this in June and the record didn't come out till mm -hmm. November so it was kind of cool for for them the people that really believed in us and supported us enough to pre-order liquid exorcist they got it months ahead of anybody else on the planet and then they also got some exclusive merch that mm -hmm. it's it's retired and they kind of have just that that they can be proud of. People were bursting at the seams. <laughs> Kudos to all of you who kept it silent for all that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's an impressive feat. People, they were bursting at the seams like, I just want to post on Facebook so badly about this album. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for respectfully uh, keeping it silent until it was officially released to the public. Yeah, special shipmates, getting it early, did it right. Um, also... Well, our drummer AJ in the beginning of the year, he got endorsed by Outlaw Drums, which is a really big deal for him. And then working with them, he got uh, his uh, drum, set, drum set that he has right now. And I mean, you all have seen his drum set. It's just phenomenal. It's the most amazing looking drum set I've ever seen. Cypress pulled out of a swamp from it's, like a couple hundred years ago or yeah, something. Literally it's, made of swamp wood. Yeah. It's like, that is, Pretty nautical for pretty a drum nautical. set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So pretty cool. If you haven't seen his drum set, definitely come out to see us at a Rusty Ship show and you can see it and touch it in person. Yeah. Um, in other news, this was kind of a, a sad one, but my favorite guitarist died this year. Dick Dale, mm -hmm. king of the surf guitar. He basically single-handedly invented surf rock, of course, surf rock being a uh, a very instrumental part of the Rusty Ship sound. And that really got started from Dick Dale in uh, the early 60s with the surf rock wave that took over the nation, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. But that was really started by Dick Dale and um, songs like Miser Lou, which to this day is like one of the most famous surf rock songs. Our band plays that very regularly it's in concert. It's a hit, it's a hit. Uh, because of Dick Dale. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I was, it, it really gave our band reason to like do a, a tribute to him and 
just kind of, I don't know, we, we were all really thinking about just the amazing music that he made this year in 2019. Yeah. And then in... Um, Every year in Nashville, they do the St. Jude Rock and Roll Marathon, which is a big marathon race in downtown Nashville. And we were very honored to be able to play during the, the marathon. And we, we played on a stage that was right at the finish line. Right um, at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, at right at Nissan line. Stadium um, in downtown Nashville. And it was cool because this was actually the weekend, same weekend as the NFL Draft. So Nashville was absolutely packed. Pumping, yeah. And it was pretty cool. We were kind of like in the, the heart of where all that stuff was going on, rocking out for like, I think it was three hours. We were rocking out. So that was definitely a really, really cool experience that we had never done before. Fun stuff. Other great shows that we had this year, Audio Feed Festival. That was fun. That was, was an amazing fun. festival, amazing people, yeah. eyes and mangers. Yeah, Jim Eisenminger uh, really did a great job putting on audio feed. We got to play with a bunch of amazing bands, got to meet a, a ton of amazing people, and just really looking forward to the next time we get to play audio feed. It was a blast, and uh, hope to do it again soon. Also, was that not the first show that we pre-sold Liquid Exorcist? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the first day that we actually officially started selling Liquid mm -hmm. Exorcist to the public. It wasn't released yet on streaming services until later in November. But at Audio Feed, that first day was the first day we actually started selling the CDs at our shows. Mm -hmm. So that was the only way you could get it mm -hmm. um, if you weren't an Indiegogo contributor was at the shows. Mm -hmm. And just a couple weeks after that, we released our first single off the album, Breaking Waves. Mm -hmm. So that was the first real glimpse that the overall public ever got of our, anything from our new album, Liquid Exorcist, that they kept hearing about for so long. And it was pretty cool because Breaking Waves came out with um, an epic, epic, epic music video same day, uh, which again was directed by Aaron Scott, who did their Crack Baby video. And I mean, I, I seriously think that that is the greatest single thing that our band has ever released. Yeah. Just like the quality of the video, the quality of the song, it's just you know, probably the catchiest song that we've ever come out with. Even the artistry of the story, just Aaron Scott, how he pulled it all together, just incredible crew there. Yeah, pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, when that happened, we also got our band uh, featured on the front page of the Shelbyville News in Indiana, and um, that's where AJ's from. He's kind of a hometown hero up there in Shelbyville, Indiana. Yeah. So it was kind of an honor for us to be on the front page of the Shelbyville newspaper. And they featured us uh, uh, again later on when the, the album came out as well. Mm -hmm. So we were mm -hmm. featured on the front page several, several times from the Shelbyville newspaper, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. After that, we got our first premiere with CCM Magazine. Yeah, for, for the Breaking Waves music mm -hmm. video. So that was really Pretty cool. Exciting. We had never been featured by CC Magazine before, but that was a really big deal. And uh, it was cool to, to start up a relationship with them. And they did a bunch of articles on all the other singles that we released as well later on. And we eventually went to their headquarters and did a, a live in-person acoustic session at their uh, CCM Magazine Cafe. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of that fun. Was, that was fun. So yeah. that was just a really cool thing. Um, I mean, for me personally, I've, I've always heard about CC and Magazine my whole life. We used to get the magazines, so it's kind of cool for my band to be featured on that mm. now. And then with Breaking Waves, it, it kind of, it made the most waves, so to speak, on Spotify of anything that we had ever released up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, it got onto some huge, huge Spotify playlists including riffs, big rock bangers, next gen, stuff like that that just has tens of thousands of followers on it. And that really um, helped shoot our streams up and it, it's uh, Breaking Waves surpassed uh, Devil Jonah, which was our leading single at the time as far as streams. And that was only like in a, a month or so that it surpassed Devil oh, Jonah. Yeah. So it was Pretty, just less than a month. Amazing. I think just a, it really? was just a few weeks time, like two okay. and a half weeks or something like that. And that was pretty imp impressive because, yeah. I mean, Devil Jonah even charted on uh, Billboard uh, last December. Um, so it's like pretty impressive that uh, mm. 
Breaking Waves was able to shoot past that. Uh, but we got a lot of buzz from a bunch of different publications when Breaking Waves re was released. Uh, we got some of our first exposure on new release today. And then um, our local Nashville rock station, 1029 The Buzz, made it their local buzz cut of the week. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So every day at 2 p.m. they were playing the buzz, uh, Breaking Waves on The Buzz for just everybody. And that's just like um, Nashville's FM rock station. So that's a really big deal. And then what's funny is that our next single, Show Me How to Live, actually became a buzz cut of the week also on 1029 The Buzz. I don't think that happens too often. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it was only like um, like a month or two apart. It was just back-to-back -back mm -hmm. singles that both got onto local buzz cut of, of the week. Pretty rare for that to happen. I don't know if that has happened in the past. I don't know. <laughs> but um, pretty, pretty honored just to have so much love from our uh, Nashville rock station yeah. but also we got on to lightning 100 which we had never done before that's Nashville's other rock station and they do they put on um, live on the green festival which is a re one of the biggest concerts in Nashville all year and so that was really huge for us to get played on uh, lightning 100 one of the DJs Casey he picked show me how to live to be uh, the DJ pick of the week and um, which we thought was just a really big deal. It was really exciting. But then after that, it actually got into their just regular full-time rotation on the radio station. Mm -hmm. They're still playing it. Yeah, they're still playing it now. <laughs> so, And I, I didn't even realize that until several friends said, hey, I heard Show Me How to Live on Lightning 100 today. And I was like, what? I thought it was just that week that they were playing it. So Apparently they liked it so much they kept rolling it. So. Yeah. So that's really cool. Lightning 100 is just a really popular station. Tons of people listen to it. So um, that's one of the, uh, I don't know, probably one of the main uh, compliments that mm. I've gotten was from random people texting me saying, oh my gosh, your song's playing on Lightning 100 right now. So, people that, by yeah. the way, are friends with him, but may not necessarily listen to the music because they're just too close, you know. Yeah. But they heard the song on the radio and they're like, Rusty Ship, okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. And then also what was cool is that um, Show Me How to Live, it also got some of our first exposure from Radio U, which is, I, I believe it's the biggest Christian rock station in America. And they've got different um, satellite radio stations and stuff. But um, it was cool because um, in order to get onto Radio U, they put our song in a, a poll online where you could vote. And it was us versus Demon Hunter, the band, which is a it's mainstream a mainstream um, Christian rock band. And um, so thank you to you shipmates out there. You helped us defeat Demon Hunter in this <laughs> poll for, um, the, the I think it was the Radio U buzz track. And so because of that, we were able to overcome demon hunter to get onto uh, radio U, and they've been playing show me how to live ever since um we developed a, a great relationship with radio U, and uh i did a, an interview with nikki and obadiah from the riot on radio U, and it's one of the best interviews i've ever done it was just really hilarious they're great people <laughs> um, so that was that was really fun too and the, the single has done really well on radio U, with show me how to live so that's another huge honor of 2019. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the last single that we released in 2019. The last single was... Detonator. 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 The third single and the final single from Liquid Exorcist before it's released. And you know, that, that single did really well, really well as well. That got a uh, exclusive premiere from HM Magazine, which was pretty cool and that uh, de started developing our relationship with HM Magazine as well. And then that That's was... the most surf rock song on the album. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And there were some stations that really latched on to Detonator more than Breaking Waves mm -hmm. and Show Me How to Live. One of those stations was some sort of rock show on WJTL out of Pennsylvania, which is a, a Christian rock 
station. And uh, that single, at the end of the year, they just did like their top 60 songs of 2019. Breaking Waves was number 42 on their list, but Detonator was number 24. So I think that's the only time that Detonator actually performed better than Breaking Waves or Show Me How to Live, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that different people are liking just a different variety of Yeah, there's kind of something for everybody. Which is very similar to how Mortal Ghost did, too. Because it's like, well, yeah. there's something for everybody there. Yep. And if right. you're somebody that likes everything, then mm -hmm. there you go. So finally, after all that anticipation all year, finally the album was officially released to the public. After on... a whole 13 months from the time we launched our Indiegogo campaign. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a long year, but the shipmates got the music right. ahead of time. We just kept everybody hanging but on. But then everybody else they got to kind of like gradually get pieces of it with the yes. singles and the music videos. And we worked really hard on those singles and making sure that they were great with the music videos and all mm -hmm. that. But November 7th, Liquid Exorcist was officially released to the public on all streaming and download services. Mm -hmm. uh, two days later, later on November 9th, we did an album release show at Grimey's uh, Record Store, which, mm -hmm. which that is an honor in and of itself because Grimey's is basically Nashville's number one record store. It's a very, very popular, famous store in Nashville. So we were very honored to be able to do our release show there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an awesome turnout, one of the greatest turnouts we've ever had in Nashville. Just getting to hang out with our closest friends, celebrate. It was a free show. And it was packed. And there were people packed. playing with beach balls all over the place in between the aisles. Balls. It was awesome. <laughs> so it was, that was awesome. It was really cool, really cool. And... Um, we just got some great pictures. We got like a huge group photo with everybody at the end, standing at the front. Mm -hmm. um, Grimey's had a good time. So everybody just had a, a good time celebrating yeah. the release of Liquid Exorcist. Yeah, it was great. So, and then the other stuff that happened this year, we just, we just want to give a few shout outs to um, different interviews that we did, we did with different media publications and different radios that we were radio stations that we were on you want to yeah yeah this year we outs? we had these guys had interviews with jesus freak hideout mm -hmm. uh shout out to nicole vaca specifically for doing that one she's always so thorough and makes it really super fun and the interviews always turn out to be like a couple hours long which is yeah just like a hangout time it's super awesome definitely check out that interview it's a really good one on on she's free yeah. really in-depth interview mm. she has the best questions yeah she's so yeah. such a good journalist um also radio U, the buzz k-o-u-j w-b-f-j crossroad cross rhythm cross rhythms uk and Rock on Purpose, and Individually? Yeah, Individually was a podcast interview we did recently, mm -hmm. and that was, uh, a, again, another one of the most in-depth interviews that we ever did, and that was an audio one, obviously, on the podcast, but that one was um, going through track by track through Liquid Exorcist. It's really in-depth. Yeah, really in-depth, and yeah. it, it was cool because you got the, the guys in the band, all of us, talking about the different things that happened. So that was a really fun, really hilarious, really interesting in-depth interview, which is definitely worth mm. checking out. And it's a fairly new podcast, but he does a really good job. A really good job. Mm -hmm. So then some other radio stations we just wanted to shout out, other than the ones that we've already shouted out. Um, uh, Way Loud, they've been very supportive with um, most of the singles that we've come out with from uh, Liquid Exorcist as well as Mortal Ghost, and Effect Radio, Christian Rock 20, Cross Rhythms UK, of course, which you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. They did a great article on us, a written article, and I mean, the guy called me from the UK on the phone. That was a fun um, interview that we did, and they're, they're playing our songs um, in the UK, but also in like uh, the Middle East. Pakistan, I think. Was it Pakistan? Yeah, it was Pakistan. Or Palestine? Or pa no, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. So it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Getting our stuff played in other countries, that's pretty awesome too. And then um, with all the different plays that we had gotten on d the different FM radio stations, um, 
our song Breaking Waves was charting on the rock charts of Christian, uh, Christian Music Weekly, which charts all the different Christian rock uh, FM stations in the U.S. Breaking Waves it got up to 53 on there, which is pretty cool. That's out of, I don't know, there's like 250 on the list or something like that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I have reason to believe that it's going to keep going up. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. But then the year 2019 ended, of course, with the end of the year list that the different radio stations and websites come out with of top songs of 2019, top albums of 2019. We were very blessed to be on quite a plethora of lists, more than any other year combined, I would say. More than we could mention right here. Yeah, more but than we could mention. We've mentioned them all year long as they've come up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it was really cool. Obviously, it's cool to get onto like big websites, their lists and stuff. But also, it was really touching just to get onto to people's individual lists. Actually, I think that that's almost. Not that it's better, but it is it, it is more like personal, you know, because you've got yeah. these big lists. It's like, that's great. That's great. But then when people actually, when they actually take the time to put together a list and then they have like their ones that they're like more connected to and they've got Rusty Ship on there, like it's just really special. It's really special. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was very touching just to see just how much our record really meant to people this year. Yeah. Um, I know one guy said that, you know, 2019 was just a really, really rough year of darkness for him. But our album Liquid Exorcist was like a, a, just a glimmer of hope and light in the midst of darkness. And stuff like that, when I hear that, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is just like a real person going through real stuff this year. And our album and the music literally made their year better made their life better and it's not just like well you know this critic liked it it's this this critic approved of it yeah it's it's a well done album blah 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 but like an actual person that's listening to it in their car stereo or whatever and it's literally minimizing the pain that they're feeling in a given day that's really special and really meaningful yeah so that was really cool we we've been hearing just tons and tons of positive feedback from Liquid Exorcist. Overall, most people like um, Liquid Exorcist even more than Mortal Ghost, which is pretty amazing um, since uh, Liquid Exorcist is just a, a shorter album. So I was just really blown away that people just love these songs. Yeah. And some, some shout outs, some special ones, um, WBFJ 89.3 in North Carolina. Uh, and specifically their show Crossroad Radio. Um, they did their um, top 30 songs of 2019. Break Can I? Yeah. Can I? Breaking Waves at number nine. That's right. And Liquid Exorcist on their list of top albums of the year. Number one, baby. Yeah. Good it's, choice, guys. <laughs> yeah, and specifically, that was DJ David Bumgarner's yes, pick. Yes, yeah. So his favorite album of 2019, number one, Liquid Exorcist. That's so a awesome. really huge deal. And then other cool stuff, like I mentioned before, some sort of rock show. They mentioned uh, Breaking Waves was in their top number 42 of the top 60 songs of 2019. Detonator was number 24 of the top 60 mm -hmm. songs of 2019. Really cool. And cool to see it up there with some really big artists. And... Probably the biggest deal of the whole year was the um, Jesus Freak Hideout top 10 um, albums of the of 2019 list that they came out with. Yeah. And they came out they come out with that list every year, and it's just all their different staff writers will just do their own individual top 10 lists of albums, uh, favorite albums of the year, and then they do a mathematical equation to calculate of those what is the average top 10 albums of the year. So our, our album got onto the list um, at the number 10 spot, top 10 albums of 2019, which is a huge deal. And um, also, uh, Mortal Ghost got onto their JFH staff picks in 2017. And um, that, was, that was like probably the, 
that that wall that definitely was the biggest thing that had ever happened to our band at the yeah. time and it kind of single-handedly launched our um i don't know our reach to, mm. to people really hearing about us for the first time yeah so it was really cool that um two years later we got we made the list again and i don't know personally i feel like this this time was even a bigger deal getting onto the JFH top 10 list than in 2017, just because of the other bands that were on the list with us. Yeah. Like these are some of my favorite bands on this list, uh, Christian rock bands, like huge bands like Switchfoot. Like I'm a huge Switchfoot mm -hmm. fan. So like that was a really big deal that we're like on the same top 10 list as Switchfoot. Also, Disciple, Demon Hunter, Norma Jean, and My Epic. Yeah, to be able to be in the mix with those, even at the 10 spot, is huge. In 2017, yeah. Rusty Ship was the second place, right? Yep, yep, yep. Which was a, it was a big deal. That was a really big but deal. You're but you're right. But being at the 10th amongst these other bands, amazing bands, is almost like better. <laughs> yeah. Not that it's better, but... It feels like a real accomplishment yeah. know, to have that happen a second time, but now with all these yeah. amazing artists it, on there too. It was better for me be just because of which artists we were on the list with, and um, whereas the other one, it was like I, I wasn't too familiar with some of the artists, and you know, some of them just weren't my favorite bands or anything like that. Um, but this one is like, man, this is amazing that mm. we're like even considered to be in the in the same tier as these bands so that is just a huge huge deal and just talk about what an amazing way to end an awesome year um yeah a year that was good from the beginning all the way to the end and it kind of just ended on a really high note um so yeah and i love these end of year wrap-ups i did too They're actually kind of like just exciting to look back and see everything that happened. It's because you, as you're going, you can't yeah. remember everything. You're like, right, right, right. Just trucking along. But at the end, it's like you're reflecting back. Like, whoa. Yeah, it's like I was telling Joy right before we started filming this. I was just like going back through our social media posts over 2019, just kind of refreshing all the different things that had happened this year, and a lot of significant things I just forgot about because there was just so many of them. There's, there's almost too many to keep track of. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, like we even from, <laughs> even from January all the way to December, every single month, big amazing major stuff mm -hmm. was happening with our band and um also i should note that um you know besides audio feed and rock and roll marathon we played like a bunch of amazing cool shows just basically yeah. every month this year with some amazing bands at some amazing venues in all kinds of different states um mm -hmm. so that was really cool too and uh you know, pretty cool playing with some awesome bands, sharing the yeah. stage with them. Looking forward to doing more of that in 2020, more than we've ever done before. Really excited for um, all of this, um, just a just a big, uh, big end to 2019, how that's going to carry on mm -hmm. into 2020. All this explosive power that has been working up in 2019 to culminate... <laughs> Yeah. And this big explosion at the end of the year. I'm really interested to see how that explosion of gunpowder at the end of 2019 is going to be a catalyst just for 2020 mm. for us to hit the ground running. It's exciting. I'm very, I'm very confident that 2020 could just be our next best year yet. <laughs> We said that every year. <laughs> well, that's because but it's true. every year it happens. <laughs> it's true. So. Wow. Good job, man. High five. Good job to you. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you for your hard work. And thank you all for your hard work supporting us and everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you for just the simple things, engaging with our social media posts. Thank you for streaming our music. Thank you for <gasps> buying our music. We and, really appreciate and that. And talking to us. That's my favorite part. Yeah, talking to us. <laughs> even just the encouraging messages yeah. on Facebook and whatever. 
talk, coming to our shows, supporting us, buying our merch. Yeah, I get kind of sad when I find out somebody has been a fan for a while and they never said anything. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, but we could have been friends this whole time. <laughs> it's true. So if you're one of those people out there who is a fan and you have not gotten in touch with us yet, please send us a message. Yeah. We really want to connect with all of our super shipmates and actually have a, an actual relationship with, with all of you. Yeah. We know people like to do passively these days, but also we're all craving a little bit of that more personal connection. Yeah. That's personally what I like it for. Yeah. It's a personal connection. So. Yeah. Me too. So thank you, everybody. Happy New Year once again. Happy um, New Year. Thanks for making this year, 2019, the best year yet. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. <laughs>